Up next, we have Jack Horner, the curator of paleontology at the Museum of the Rockies and Regents Professor. Okay. All right, well, I hate introductions. They're kind of a waste of time, right? I'm Jack Horner, I'm the curator of paleontology. So, anybody remember the name of this lecture? It says dinosaur science, but it has a peculiar, teaching dinosaur science using unthinkable methods. Sounds fun, doesn't it? I don't actually know how other people look at fossils. I mean, I have no idea. I know that, you know, that as far as I'm concerned, people read too much. Um, they get, you know, they, they, they get other people's ideas in their head and they think they're right. I don't read too much. I don't read anything. And I always tell my students that if they do something first, they don't have to read anything. Somebody else can read their stuff. If you go over to the museum, and you go to any museum, people think of these things as pretty precious. I mean, they are pretty precious. I mean, people go to a lot of work. We, have, we go out in the field and we find these things, we excavate them, we're very careful about it, we bring them back to our museum, we very carefully clean the dirt off of them, we glue them all together, and then sometimes we put them in the museum and when we put them in the museum, we put them in there for people to look at. But at our museum, at the Museum of the Rockies, we do something else. And, and as a result, we get some pretty cool information that nobody else knew because of one thing. You know what that one thing is? You see how precious it is? Now how precious is it? You see the inside of this dinosaur bone? The inside of this dinosaur bone has more information than the outside of it does. Isn't that cool? I can tell you how old the dinosaur was when it died. I can tell you how fast it was growing. I can tell you what sex it was. I can tell you even what its metabolism was like. I'm a spatial thinker. I, I think spatially. I think most people think linearly. And I think that's the difference. I mean, I, I see things in three dimensions. I, I think about things in three dimensions. If I'm interested in dinosaurs, I break them open and look inside. Dinosaur eggs have been found in the 1800s. Um, the first dinosaur embryo I found in 1984. And it was simply because I think spatially. And I would go to museums and say, can I open your dinosaur, can I just drop them on the floor and look inside? And they'd say, no, you can't do that. And so the first time I got some dinosaur eggs, I took a hammer and a chisel and I busted it open and there was the first dinosaur embryo in the world. One of the things I'm interested in is is how dinosaurs' skulls change as they grow up. And I've made, some, I've made some hypotheses lately that certain kinds of dinosaurs didn't exist, like a dinosaur called Torosaurus, I've hypothesized is actually an adult Triceratops. And that's very controversial, especially at Yale University, where they named the thing. And between Yale University and the Smithsonian, they have Close to, close to 30 pretty nice Triceratops skulls. I mean, you'd think they'd just give me one, but they wouldn't. So I had to go out and collect my own, and I've, uh, over the last 10 years, collected about 120 of them. And so I have juveniles, teenagers, adults, and I've just cut up a whole bunch of them. And we learned, of course, that, I, that we were right. Taurosaurus is a full-grown Triceratops. Actually, I was born this way. I, I, uh, there's no point in my life when I didn't want to be a paleontologist. There were certainly a lot of times when I didn't think I would, would end up being a paleontologist because I have 
some severe learning disabilities, uh, but but I always, I don't know, I was always very optimistic about it. Um, I, I can't read and still can't read. I've, I've written more books than I've ever read. Dyslexia is one of those things nobody knew about when I was growing up, so, so you know, my father thought I was lazy. Um, some of the teachers thought I was just stupid. And, and I had a lot of confidence in myself and was out looking for fossils all the time and knew that there were a lot of things that I could do better than a lot of other people. But, uh, but I basically flunked out of all of school. I mean, I, my English teacher gave me a D minus, minus, minus. And he said, this really means it's an F, but I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> so. The tiny little fragments don't look like much, but by taking these and grinding this bone up, we can look at things like carbon isotopes and hydrogen isotopes and, and oxygen isotopes. We get a pretty good idea of what they ate, whether they were eaten in the water, whether they were eaten out of the water, what, what environment they were in. Lots more information. And besides that, we take some of this stuff and we dump it into acid, and the acid eats away the bone and leaves usually nothing. But at our lab, at some of the T. rexes that we've looked at, we've actually found blood vessels, intact blood vessels, and proteins. We have found a number of proteins inside the bone. In Jurassic Park, they, they basically get DNA out of amber and, and clone it to make a dinosaur. We've tried that. We've, we've tried amber. We've tried getting DNA out of a dinosaur. We've gotten proteins. We've gotten other biomolecules, but we've never found DNA. We just don't think it lasts that long. But birds are dinosaurs, so you don't have to make a dinosaur because we already have them. But we now have the technology to modify dinosaurs, to, to modify animals. We know that we can turn genes on and turn genes off and actually change their shape. And so I have a couple of postdocs working on what we call the Dino Chicken Project. I assume you know that, that every once in a while children are born with tails. Human children are born with tails. That in itself tells us the genetic pathway is still there for an ancestral trait. And chickens are occasionally born with a tail as well. So we're looking for that gene. We just, we're gonna turn that gene on that's been turned off for millions of years to recreate a tail. So when our bird hatches out of its egg, it will have a tail. We also know that the three-fingered hand it fuses together to make the wing. So we're going to stop that from happening so it actually hatches out with a three-fingered hand and arms instead of wings. And we know how to do that. Um, we also, there's an atavistic gene, a throwback gene, an ancestral gene for teeth in birds. And that has been discovered as well. You have to kind of, once in a while, Jackson, you have to go against, you have to go against the the public norm, right? And people say, don't, you can't do that. Just say, well, I'm gonna go out and collect some dinosaurs and do it myself. What do you think of that? Because so, a lot of people have a lot of preconceived ideas about things, you know, like you can't, shouldn't break bones open, all right? But if you break bones open, you might discover some really cool new things. It shouldn't break it anymore, should I? Oh, there's a piece. <laughs>